Hello, welcome to noise control and its management. This is the seventh week of this particular course and uh, today what we plan to discuss is a continuation of our last week's discussion which was what makes a microphone a really good microphone especially from the standpoint of making good scientific measurements which are reliable and credible. So two criteria which we had discussed uh, last week were firstly we had discussed about uh, uh, linearity of the microphone that as the signal strength increases the output from the microphone typically which is in volts that should also increase proportionally. So that is uh, the implication of the term linearity and the second uh, parameter which we had said was important was a flat frequency response that is the ratio of input and output or the transfer function of the microphone uh, remains same and it remains a constant flat line uh, for different frequencies. So two parameters which we had said were important to uh, consider a microphone good were linearity of the microphone and also its frequency response should be flat. The third and equally important parameter is microphone sensitivity. So what is microphone sensitivity? Essentially what it tells us is that how sensitive is your microphone. Now in general the microphones which we have discussed uh, me measure pressure. So the to the system to the input uh, of this system measurement system is pressure in Pascals. And then what microphone yields when it gets excited by the uh, these pressure signals is some voltages uh, typically in millivolts or microvolts. So essentially a microphone which is more sensitive will for one pascal of excitation pressure it will yield larger number of volts. So that is what is known as microphone sensitivity. Now as we have seen that in the land of acoustics a lot of terms are expressed in decibels. So similarly we also do have the unit of microphone sensitivity is specified in terms of decibels. So that is what we are going to discuss today. So let us say, so the symbol for microphone sensitivity is LS, okay. S is standing for sensitivity. So how do we define LS equals 20 log of 10 y over y ref. So we will explain what this expression means. So ls which is microphone sensitivity and this is in decibels. So it is measured in decibels that is 20 log 10 of y over y ref. Now what is y and what is y ref? So y is uh, it tells us that how many volts volts does the microphone generate when it is subjected to one pascal of pressure. So, so if you have a microphone and you subject it to 1 pascal of pressure and it gets excited and it generates half a volt then y will be 0 0.5 divided by 1 which is half a volt per pascal. If uh, you subject it to th uh, 3 pascals and it generates 3 volts then it would be 3 over 3 which is 1 volt per pascal. So the units of this are volts per pascal and then y ref is the response 
of a reference microphone. It is a response of a reference microphone. Now, so there could be let us consider some microphone which we say that this is a reference microphone. So, we always compare a real microphone with respect to some imaginary reference microphone. And, and this, uh, so again when this microphone is subjected to some pressure it generates voltage and we assume that this reference microphone, uh, this comes in two flavors. The first type of reference microphone, it generates 1 volts for 1 pascals. So, for this y ref equals is equal to 1 volts per pascal. So, this is the first type of reference microphones. So, whenever we specify the sensitivity of a microphone, we should always state what is the reference microphone. The other reference microphone which people use is one which generates 1 volt for 1 micro bar. So, 1 volt for 1 micro bar. So, 1, one bar is 10 to the power of 5 pascals. So, 1 micro bar is uh, 10 to the power of minus 1 that is 0 0.1 pascals. So, this is 1. So, so it is for 0 0.1 pascals. So, in this case y ref equals 1 volt per 1 micro bar and if I just do it, this is or you can say it is 10 volts per Pascal. So, based on this understanding, we can calculate the sensitivity of a microphone. So, let us do an example. So, consider a microphone, a mic has a sensitivity of minus 26 decibels and whenever we specify the sensitivity, we always specify what is the value of y ref. So, we will say that y ref is equal to 1 volt per Pascal. So, the question is question if the sound pressure level. So, sound pressure level we define uh, designate it as L p. So, L p is 110 decibels then how many volts will mic generate? Okay. How many volts the microphone is going to generate? So, this is the question. So, what do we do? First thing we have to do is for this microphone, first we have to calculate that if it is subjected to 1 pascals, how many volts it is going to generate. So, so we know that L s equals 20 log y over y ref. Okay. So, from this I can say that y equals y ref times 10 to the power of L s by 20. Okay. So, y equals and what is y ref? It is 1, 1 volts per Pascal times 10 to the power of what is L s minus 26 divided by 20. So, if you do the math, it comes to be 0 0.0501 volts per Pascal. So, what this tells us is that this particular microphone which has a sensitivity of minus 26 decibels, it will generate half a volt of signal for each Pascal of pressure when it is going to be exposed to. 
So, now what is the question? The question is that if the sound pressure level is 110 decibels, how many volts it is going to generate? So, now we have to figure out how many Pascals corresponds to 110 decibels. So, now we calculate pressure. calculate pressure. So, L p is equal to 20 log p r m s by p ref. Okay. So, this gives us p r m s equals p ref into 10 to the power of L p divided by 20. So, p r m s equals p ref. So, what is p ref? Reference pressure is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascals times 10 to the power of and what is the value of L p? The question says that it is 110 decibels divided by 20. So, this if you do all the calculation it comes to 6.32. So, 6.32 Pascal corresponds to 1110 decibel. Okay. Now, what is again our original question that how many volts the microphone is going to generate? How do we figure it out? We know that for 1 volts, 1 Pascal it generates 0 0.05 and it is a linear microphone. So, volts generated and this is the RMS value because we are using the RMS pressure. Okay. So, RMS value of volts generated is equal to 6.32 times 0 0.0501 and that comes to 0 0.316 volts. Okay. So, that is how we can calculate. So, if we know the sensitivity then using that number for whatever decibel level is, is there, we can figure out how many volts the microphone is going to generate. And the point is that higher the sensitivity which means the value of y, if, if L s is high then y will be also high. Why? Because this term is going to be high. So, if L s is high which is a more sensitive microphone this y will be high and it will generate more voltages for any measurement. So, if we are really interested in measuring very very low pressures then what we really want are uh, microphones which have high sensitivity. So, the point is that if you think your microphones uh, if your pressure ranges are very low then you need high sensitivity microphone. And to some extent vice versa. Now, the example another example example 2 is that we just redo the whole question again redo above example, but phi ref is what? So, we had said that there could be two uh, uh, standards. In one case the reference mic is 1 volt per Pascal, here the reference mic is 1 volt per micro bar and that corresponds to 1 10 volts per Pascal. So, in this case L s equals 20 log y by y ref. and y comes to be. So, y ref is what? Y, uh, y ref is 20 10 times 10 to the power of L s by 20. So, y equals 10 times 10 to the power of minus 26 by 20 and that comes to 0 0.501 volts per Pascal. 
So, what I am saying is that because the reference microphone was more sensitive that implies that y will also be more sensitive. So, now in contrast with the earlier, the earlier mic was generating only 0 0.05 volts per Pascal, this is generating 10 times as many volts, it is generating half a volt per Pascal. And then we know that T R M S for 1 1 10 decibels, it corresponds to 6.32 volts, excuse me 32 Pascals. Uh, so, volts generated by the microphone equals 6.32 times 0 0.501 and that comes to 3.169 volts. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to discuss about sensitivity. Now, so these are the three important considerations when we are talking about microphones. The first thing is that we are interested in is its frequency response, the second thing is linearity and the third thing is sensitivity. And then of course, there are other things also, so there are some other parameters also which we will talk about. So, important considerations we have discussed are first one was linearity, second one was frequency response So, a microphone which has a very flat frequency response is good, third one was sensitivity and then there are two more important characteristics. The, so, the fourth one is uh, transient response. and we will talk about it and the fifth one is directivity. So, these are some of the more important considerations and then of course, there are other considerations also when we are talking about microphones. So, others are humidity effect, noise, internal noise. and so on and so forth, but these are the four five important characteristics. So, the next thing we will talk about is transient response. Transient response, okay. so what is transient response? What this means is that how good is your microphone in terms of capturing signals which occur for very brief periods of time. Okay. So, I will give you an example. So, you can have a sound signal. So, on this axis I am plotting T, on the y axis I am plotting pressure as a function of T. Hmm. Now, we can have, so a lot of times when we talk about sound or noise or uh, acoustics, we talk about nice gently changing signals right, like sinusoids, but real sound or re and for that sake real noise is not like this. The real noise is it may go like this. Okay. So, the microphone has to be sensitive, has to be smart enough to capture all these sharp peaks. It 
within small periods of time there are very large changes in the pressure okay and if it is able to capture these sharp peaks then we will say that it is a very good dynamic response uh, transient response if it is unable to capture these sharp peaks then it will not necessarily have a good dynamic response so uh, a microphone which has poor transient response so this is the, red, the so the red color is the actual signal now we can capture this signal by using a microphone which has poor transient response and a good transient response so let's see how the signal is going to look like when it is being captured by poor transient response so if there is a poor transient response of a microphone then so i am going to just plot so a poor transient response may do something like this you know something like this so this is the response of a mic with poor transient poor transient response okay a lot of times a system has poor transient response if its mass is more so what do you have in a microphone there is a thin diaphragm and when pressure hits it then the diaphragm vibrates now if the mass of the system is large then the system becomes sluggish so you know so it's it doesn't get excited very easily and it it's whatever its motion it doesn't go down easily also so if there is a lot if so if the diaphragm is heavy that's why a lot of these microphones have extremely thin diaphragms they try to minimize the mass as much as possible okay so so it could be either because of the mass of diaphragm is large or something accidentally has gotten deposited on the microphone's diaphragm small amount of water or some dirt or something which has increased its mass and the transient response becomes bad so that is the case or in some cases even the electronics of the system could be that it filters out all these sharp peaks so that also gives you poor transient response so the causes for poor transient response could be either mechanical or electronic in nature electrical in nature and now if you have a microphone which has a good transient response then it will capture these peaks easily okay so it will go like this and then it will do all this so this green curve is a mic with good transient response so that is another thing and the last important parameter for a microphone which has to be good is that it should be i mean most of the times we are looking for microphones which have a specific directivity response and in general we want that microphones should be able to capture sound from all the directions so they should have uh, they should be less directional in nature so that is another thing but we will talk about this directivity in our next class but till so far what we have discussed about are four important parameters which for good microphones one is that they should be linear second is they should have a flat frequency response third is that they should be highly sensitive fourth is that their transient response should be nice and good and the last thing is about directivity which we will discuss tomorrow so with that we conclude for today and we look forward to meeting you tomorrow thank you bye